with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. This one, Hoppy elects a sheriff. Most folks know that in the early West, every community had its forces of good and of evil. In Mills Valley, these forces had shown great rivalry. As California and I rode into town, things looked pretty bad. Tomorrow's election day, and whether the sheriff will be a man of law and order or a figurehead for the forces of evil will depend on those ballots. We rode down the dusty main street. At the hitching rail in front of the hotel, across the square from the courthouse, California and I dismount and tie off. Gee, harsh of that, Hoppy. We don't mourn hit town before the shooting starts. It's over there on the courthouse square. Listen. Gather around, folks. Gather around. I aim to tell you why Mills Valley needs a new sheriff. Well, what do you know? Uh, it's just a little electioneering, California. Yeah, well, guess me and you'd be better off to go wash up. I'm hankering for some victuals. Now, uh, I say gather around, folks. Hear the facts. You go ahead, California. I think I'll gather around and hear some of those facts. Oh, now, you know better than that, Hoppy. I go where you go. <laughs> All right, come on, then. Hey, that's Joe Benson, candidate for the Committee for Law and Order. What do you have to say? Ought to make good listening. Uh, we'll see. He's getting a pretty good crowd together there. I see Mary, old John Stebbins' daughter over there. Yeah, sure is. Ain't seen that gal since we buried her pa. No, we'd better say hello. Friends and neighbors of Mills Valley, tomorrow is election day. It's your duty to elect a new sheriff. It seems that for some time now, things in this town haven't been up to law and order. That's why I say now is the time to change this. You need a new sheriff. Hello, Mary. Haven't seen you lately. Oh, hop along, California. Hi, Miss Mary. It's nice to see you. I say new sheriff, folks. For you owe to yourselves and your families to elect an honest, loyal man who respects your rights. <laughs> for the past eight years, a certain element in this here county has seen to it that the sheriff was not a man of law and order. We gotta change that. We gotta... Ah, shut up! Friend, if you don't like what I'm a-saying, I'll give you your chance to speak your piece in a moment. Right now, I aim to... Right now, as sheriff of Mills County, I aim to put you under arrest, Joe Benson. You'll have to come with me. Oh, Hoppy, don't let him do that to Joe Benson. He has a right to say his piece. Uh, you're right, Mary. He should have a chance. I'm going up on that platform. California, wait here. Folks, I'd like to have a word. Hey, help on, Jackson! All right, Hoppy. Now that you've butted in, what do you want? I just want to say that I think Joe Benson has a right to speak his piece. That's absolutely right, Hoppy. I'm not arresting him for having his say. I'm arresting him for disturbing the peace. You heard him start that argument. I got a 45 that says you ain't arresting Joe Benson for nothing, sir. Now, wait a minute, man. Gunplay, taking things in your own hands, is what you're trying to defeat at the ballot box tomorrow. That's right, Hoppy. That's your right, folks. Law and order is what you want. We'll settle this at the election tomorrow. In the meantime, Sheriff, uh, let me make a proposition. And what's that? The people in this town know what Benson stands for. You turn him over to me. I'll guarantee he won't make another speech. No, Hoppy, that wouldn't do. If I gotta go to jail for telling my friends the truth, then to jail I go. Don't be stubborn, Joe. The sheriff must know you'd have a better chance of winning that election behind bars. Yeah, and we don't want to take unfair advantage. Well, how about it, Sheriff? Hoppy, if Joe here will give me his word, he won't make no more ruckus. How about it, Joe? Well, 
It's a deal. Only I hate to be bossed around by the... Then it's a deal. All right, Hoppy. You asked for it. And I'll back it up, Sheriff. You better. One more speech before election time and I'll lock you both up. to Hopalong Cassidy and Hoppy Alexa Sheriff. Joe Benson, the candidate for sheriff in tomorrow's Mills Valley election, has just escaped being arrested by the present sheriff. Hoppy knows that Sheriff Meeker represents a bad element, but to stay out of jail, Benson has to promise that he'll make no more speeches before election time. Hoppy in California talk things over week. Uh, one reason I couldn't let the sheriff put you in jail is because I wanted to talk to you, Benson. Yeah. Son, uh, what's your chances in tomorrow's election? Well, fellas, I tell you, if the election was held fair and square, I'm pretty sure I'd win it hands down. But you don't feel it'll be conducted fairly? Never has been, Hoppy. It's most likely that everybody what's really entitled to vote will do his balloting in the morning. Well, that'll be legal, like. Yes, that will be. But about noon, you'll see some fellas on horseback start drifting in. They'll be out of county men that Meeker's outfit hires to come here to vote. Uh, and that's illegal, like stuff in the ballot box. Yeah, only Meeker tries to make it look legal. That's why we can't do much about it. How's that, Benson? Well, our voting law says any resident of the county is a lawful voter. All he has to do is prove his residence. Then how do these men Meeker imports qualify to vote? Meeker has his own men, men who are known to live in the county, and get up before the election committee and testify that the outsider who is about to vote is a legal resident. Why, them thieving coyotes. Why don't you call in the federal troops, Benson? Yeah, clean house. Well, so long as Meeker represents authority by election, well, the troops won't likely interfere at the request of plain citizens. Well, get up a petition and impeach Meeker. We tried that, Hoppy. We only succeeded in getting four good men a choice spot in Boot Hill. Petition was stolen. Majority rule, good or bad, that's something. Yeah, and that's something we got to do something about, I'd say. We aim to tomorrow at the election. You got any ideas, Benson? Just one. We don't aim to let outsiders vote. May split this county in half, make a battleground of the courthouse square, but we're... Maybe we can fix things up without bloodshed. Uh, I wish to Pete I knowed how, Hoppy. There's only one thing Meeker's men understand. That's gun talk. Well, there's more than one way to skin a jackrabbit. Ah, let's sleep on it. Maybe we'll think of something. Well, you can try, Hoppy. It won't do no good to my way of thinking. All right, turn in here. My office. Got a little work to do. All right, Benson. See you in the... Duck, Hoppy! Get down, quick! Now, what was that for? Somebody don't want you around tomorrow. Or was it... Me, they didn't want around. Whichever it was, I was in the middle. Look, I got a bullet clean through my hat. I'm sorry, California. Where did that shot come from? Uh, across the street, there at the corner of the Three Corns Cafe. Ain't no use to go after him. Gone by now. Well, uh, let's go, California. They won't try again, not tonight. But keep your eyes open. My eyes gonna be as wide open as this here hole in my headpiece, Ha, <laughs> Hey, by the way, Benson... What's that crowd down the street? Oh, it's a medicine show, Hoppy. Down on that vacant corner across from O'Hara's livery stable. Medicine show? Uh, yeah, let's mosey down that way, Hoppy. Might yeah. as well, I guess. Uh, less likely to get shot at again in a crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our entertainment. It is now 7 o'clock. In one half hour, we leave your city. But before we leave, I want to give our many friends one last chance to secure a bottle of Old Dr. Jack's famous Chippewa Indian Elixir. Old Dr. Jack's Chippewa Indian Elixir, friends, chases, chills, cures, colic, puts the fizz to the rheumatism. Hey, give me a bottle, Doc. Right, my friend, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to give you two bottles for the price of one. Two bottles. Sort of a part and gesture. And at the same time, that goes for the rest of you folks. Two bottles of old Dr. Jack's chip of all Indian elixir. Just one dollar. Hey, I'll take two bottles. Hey, uh, Hoppy, uh, Hoppy, I think I'll buy me two of them uh, bottles. Oh, you don't want that junk, California? It isn't worth the price of the bottle at the end. Well, it tastes good. That's something. <laughs> All right, it's your money and your stomach. You're right, Hoppy. Hey, uh, Doc, give me two bottles. All right, partner. And say, Chippewa Indian elixir makes a good shaving lotion. <laughs> if you ever shave. <laughs> Dagnab, smart Alex. Well, anyway, I get more hair in my chin than you got in that bald skull of yours. <laughs> That'll hold him, Hoppy. <laughs> Can't sleep in the hotel lobby, California. Let's go upstairs. Oh, I can sleep at all, Hoppy. Uh, hotel bed is just too soft for me. Yeah. <laughs> Always complaining. Hoppy. Why, it's Mary Stebbins. Yeah, I wonder what she wants. Hello, Mary. Oh, thank goodness I found you, Hoppy. Hello, California. Uh, good evening, Miss Mary. Hoppy, you were always such a good friend of my father. Yes, I was. Well, I'm having trouble. I wonder if I could ask you to help me. Well, I'll be glad to do what I can. I knew you would. It's that that Dr. Jack that owns the medicine show. I rented him my corner lot across from the livery stable. Go on, Mary. We wanted a place near the center of town to attract as big a crowd as possible. He promised to pay me $30 if I let him put his show on my lot for three days. Uh-oh, and he didn't pay? I know he was a crook. He was going to pay me at 10 o'clock this morning. I just found out that he left town at 7.30 and he didn't pay. Well, he'd be six or eight miles out of town by now. Oh, yes, sir. Halfway to Carson Canyon. Oh, I know it seems unreasonable of me to make such a fuss over $30, but frankly, I need it. Oh, me and Hoppy's got a crow to pick with the old dog anyhow, dagneb smart Alex. Oh, I don't know, California. Uh, uh, what's that? Oh, it seems to me this would be Sheriff Meeker's business. No, citizen of Mills Valley depends on Sheriff Meeker for anything, Hoppy. I'm sorry. Now, wait. Not so fast. Uh, you mean there we're going after that farmer, Hoppy? Uh, I don't see why not. Thank you, Hoppy. I do appreciate it. That's all right. I'll give you the money in the morning. I'll get the horses, Hoppy. Wait a minute, California. Let's see what the commotion's about. Mm, whole parcel of folks. I wonder what it would be. There he is, men. Right here in the hotel lobby where I said he'd be. What's up, Benson? Oh, I thought you'd be home practicing up on how to be the next sheriff, Joe. We're on our way home now, but we wanted to have a word with Hoppy. All right, Joe, what is it? Hoppy, our voting rules here in Mills Valley says that the poll will be conducted by one man from each faction and one outsider. I understand. I've talked it over with our committee for law and order. We talked to Meeker's outfit, too. We want you to be the outside member of the poll committee. Well, how about it? Well, if that's the way you want it. Then you'll do it? Sure, I'll be honored. That's oh, agreed, then. Thanks, Hoppy. And now we'll be pushing on. Uh, Benson, I wonder if you'll see Miss Mary home. Oh, why, sure. We're going to run a little errand. I'll get the horses right now. Hoppy. All right, California. We'll see you in the morning, Mary. Just in a campfire up that draw. Could be old Doc Jack's outfit. Where, California? Right up that there draw, uh, past that old cedar. Well, we'll ride up that way and see. There it is. That's Doc's medicine show wagon beside it. You're right, California. Uh, better not go riding in without letting them know first, huh? No, that's right. Uh, hello there. Don't seem to hear you, Hoppy. Hello there. Hello, Dr. Jack. I well, guess they heard that time. Put down your guns, man. It's me. Hop along, Cassidy. What do you want, Cassidy? I want to talk to you, Doc. Well, walk up to the campfire, Cassidy, by yourself and keep your hands raised high. Now, 
back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Alexa Sheriff. Hoppy still has his hands up as he walks toward old Dr. Jack's medicine show wagon. He must waste no time in collecting the debt for Mary Stebbins, or he'll be late in getting back to serve on the Parson County Election Board. In the light of the campfire, he cautiously watches the gleaming barrels of three rifles. The grizzled faces of Dr. Jack and his two assistants stare at him. California waits for the horses at the head of the draw. All right, now, Cassidy, what do you want? Doc, you left Mills Valley owing Miss Mary Stebbins a debt of $30. What makes you think so? Miss Stebbins asked me to collect it. She needs the money. Chief, Harry, put down your guns. As for the money, Cassidy, I plumb forgot it. Well, oversights are understandable, but I'm here to collect. Sure, sure. Come on in the wagon. I'll write you a check. What's wrong with cash? Now, you don't think I'd carry money across country like this, do you? Bandits. That's what we thought you was. All right. Write me a check. Come on in the wagon. I'll write it. And hurry it up, will you, Doc? i got to get back to town. Whatever you say, Cassidy. Here's your check, Cassidy. Everything all right now? Sure, Doc, and thanks. A little lady really needed this, I oh, guess. Oh, sorry, I forgot it. Don't mean to hurry you none, but uh, me and the boys got to get some sleep. Just one more thing, Doc. Uh, are you going to Carson Canyon? Maybe. Do me a favor, will you? Tell Captain Smith at the fort there to send a few troops over to Mills Valley tomorrow. Election. Sure, we'll be passing through. I'll tell him. Thanks, and good night. Good night. Thank you, Hoppy. Yeah, California. Well, come on. Way past my bedtime. Uh, did you get the money? Yep. Well, let's go, or we're going to miss being there for the election. Morning, Mary. Oh, it's you, Hoppy. Come in. Have some breakfast. No, I can't, thanks. California and I have to get into town. Oh, I'm sorry. We just dropped by to leave Doc Jack's check. Oh, thank you. Are you sure this is it? Yeah, why? Well, there's nothing on it. Just a blank check. Why, I saw him make it out. Thirty dollars. Well, there it is. I'm sorry to be so much trouble, but... Well, what do you know? Well, he sure tricked me. I saw him write it. Oh, just let it go. He's a tricky old thief. I'll make it good for you. In the meantime, I've got an idea. What about the check? No, about the election. I'll send you $30 tonight. Oh, don't worry about it, Hoppy. It won't be any trouble. We'll see you later. Thanks, Hoppy. Well, how do you like that? Uh, uh, what, Hoppy? Doc Jack gave me a trick check. It was blank. Blank? Uh, the old coyote cheating a gal like that. Well, maybe it's not as bad as it looks. It gave me an idea. Let's go. I'm glad you got back in time, Hoppy. The ballot box is in Judge Odom's office here. The other two members of the election board is in there, too. Ah, good, Benson. I want to ask you something. All right, Hoppy. Are you sure that everybody who will vote afternoon will be Meeker's hired voters? Positive. I got some of the boys to get up a petition to back up what I told you yesterday. Here it is. Hmm. Jones, Thompson, O'Brien. That's good. Then we'll beat Meeker at his own game. Well, what's up, Hoppy? Just a little plan to eliminate crooked voters, Benson. Here it is, Hoppy. All wrapped up like you told me to. Thanks, California. See you boys later. It's noon, men. I guess most of the votes are in. Yes, Hoppy. All the qualified votes. Hey, what do you mean? Well, I mean all but the paid votes that Meeker will send in. Them's fighting words. Well, well, I yeah, mean it, yeah, 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 boys. Let's have no rough stuff. This is an election board. Now, look what you've done. Broken the bottle of ink you used to write the ballots. 
Well, I didn't knock it off. And I darn sure didn't do it. Somebody broke the bottle and spilled the ink. Well, we'll have to get some more. Wait a minute. I got a bottle here in my pocket. Ain't that lucky. Here, now put it in the center of the table. Don't want to get it broke, too. No, sir. Don't want it broken. Say, Hoppy, here comes one of Meeker's paid voters. Look how dusty and trail-worn. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Meeker's not going to like hearing that you said them things. Yeah, the truth's the truth. Take it easy, boys. The voter's coming in now. This is where I vote at, partner? Well, if you're qualified, where you live? Pine Flat, northeast corner of the county. I've got some cattle. Can you prove residence? Well, I sure can. This man here knows me. I know him. He's okay. Uh, let him vote, man. I can't read or write and do the writing for me. I want to vote for Meeker for sheriff. Yeah, see what I told you, Hoppy? What's that, stranger? Uh, no, nothing. Uh, j- uh, just nothing. I'll write your balance for you, George. Say you want to vote for Meeker for sheriff? That's right. Meeker. He's a good man. A lot of my neighbors coming in, too, and they're all voting for Meeker. Folks, I've just been told by the election board that they're done counting the ballots. My pal Hoplong Cassidy will tell you how they come out. Now, well, friends, as you know, it's the duty of the outside member of the Mills Valley Election Board to make known the tally. Yeah, that's right, Hoppy, but uh, who won? Ah, uh, here it is. There were 97 ballots cast for Sheriff Meeker. <laughs> and there were 103 ballots for Joe Benson. Ah, <laughs> uh, but wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not all. There were nine ballots for nobody. They were perfectly blank. <laughs> So it looks like Joe Benson, candidate for law and order, is your next sheriff. Yeah, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. Quiet. Now, folks, I demand a recount. 97 for me and 103 for Joe Benson's crazy enough. We got nine blank ballots. How do you explain that? Easy enough, Meeker. Those boys you hired to vote must have double-crossed you. What? They wouldn't dare. All right, Meeker. I call on this group to witness what you just said. Uh-uh. Well, what do you mean, Cassidy? I mean, I want them to remember your words. You've admitted before them that you did hire outside voters. Here, now, wait a minute. Well, Meeker, it looks like folks want to clean up around here. Well, not so fast, folks. The election's be hanged. I'm still law and order in Mills Valley, and I'll shoot the first man, woman, or kid that says I ain't. Put that gun up, Meeker. You've just been ousted. You can't challenge the ballot, Meeker. You're licked, Meeker. Why Why don't you be a man about it? Meeker, put up that gun. I've had enough of your nosing around, Hoppy. Reach. I'll reach and hang a fist on it. <laughs> oh, you... Blast you, Cassidy. Here's his gun, California. Now the rest of you men, there'll be no more shooting. The election's over, folks. You have a new sheriff. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> sure, some celebrating, Hoppy, eh? Some fun. <laughs> right, California, there's always fun when there's law and order. Is that right, Sheriff Benson? You're darn tootin', Hoppy. And now, Mary, the Committee for Law and Order wants you to have this $30. But, Hoppy, I don't want charity. Oh, it ain't charity, Miss Mary. (laughs) No, Mary, you earned it. If it hadn't been for old Dr. Jack cheating you, we might not have won this election. I still don't know how you've done it, Hoppy. I'll tell you this much, Benson. When old Doc wrote that check, he was fresh out of ink. Nary a drop, Hoppy, sir. So he wrote that check using Chippewa Indian elixir for ink. He says the stuff is good for everything. You don't say. You mean it? He wrote that check with Alexis. And Hoppy says it looked like ink at the time. But by the time we got into town, it had faded out. Clean as a whistle. Mary was pretty disappointed, but it gave me an idea. You mean you... I mean that those men Meeker hired weren't entitled to vote, so... Why, Hoppy? I just had California fill an old ink bottle with elixir. And that's the way the nine blank ballots got in the ballot box, eh? <laughs> oh, Hoppy, you're wonderful. It sure is, Miss Mary. <laughs> 
Mary, your flattery won't get you another red penny. <laughs> oh, now, don't give Poppy all the credit. we got to hand it to old Doc Jack, too. His Chippewa Indian elixir was sure good for what ail Parson County. <laughs> <laughs> was quite a trick Hoppy used to elect Sheriff Benson. Well, next time we meet, Hoppy really has a great surprise in store for you. It's a story that takes Hoppy and California all the way to San Francisco in an adventure called Peril at Pier 19. So be sure to listen to the next exciting episode of Hop Along Cassidy. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Elects the Sheriff was written by Richard T. Parker. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.